Good evening, Greater Second. What a blessing it is to be again in the house of the Lord and in your viewing space that we call YouTube at home. Let me just thank you once again for your faithfulness during these Bible study periods and oh how I have uh, been enjoying bringing God's word to you by way of YouTube. Psalm 119 has just been a blessing uh, to me, and I hope it's been a blessing to you as we continue to study God's word together. We're trying to impact our spirit as it relates to a renewed love of the word of God. And as we make ready to go into our study on tonight, let me just remind us all that how important it is that we pray one for another. We're living in some times now such as it is all over the world, and uh, foreign countries, but yet here at home. And then even as it relates to our congregation, we just need to make sure that we are praying one for another. And then we want to make sure that we are continually maturing as it relates to prayer for our political leaders, those who are in office from our local level all the way to our national level. Uh, God ordained government, so we ought to pray for those whom God has allowed to serve us from our uh, local, our state, 
and our national government. Pray for our country. And then, as we always know, the Bible said, pray for the peace of Israel. Uh, I don't know all of how that's going to come out, but I do know Israel is God's people. And uh, they was attacked, and now they are fighting back. And uh, That's above my pay grade, but I do know that prayer is always in order. So let's pray for what's going on. And then we look at what done happened in Haiti. It's just all over the world now. Look like there is uh, uh, anger and evil that's going, but the prayers of the righteous still uh, availeth much. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Most gracious and almighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we petition you with hearts filled with thanksgiving. You are so good to us, and we bow now to say thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your favor on our lives. Thank you for Calvary. And it was at Calvary where you fixed it for mankind. And we now are able to have a relationship with you through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you. And as we uh, head toward that great holiday that we call Easter, Resurrection Sunday, may we be reminded that the cross was your way of offering a sacrifice for the sins of mankind. Your only begotten son gave his life willingly, and we thank you. But he didn't stay dead on the third day morning. He rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. So we serve the risen Savior. And Lord, we, we love you. We thank you. And it is our desire that we would live a life that's pleasing in your sight. Have mercy on those in this congregation who are uh, headed for surgery and recovery and all the ailments and ill uh, sickness that we're going through in our church. We just lift them up to you and ask for comfort and care and, and healing. And then, Lord, we lift up all of those who are serving in political office and praying for their willingness to bow before a holy God and say to him, not my will, but thy will be done. Help them to serve you as they serve your people. And then, Lord, we lift up all of those in foreign countries and we lift up Israel to you and all that's going on in that part of the world. We just praying that you would have mercy on those who are hungry in this war-torn time and country, provide food for so many who are headed toward a famine, according to our news media. Oh, God, provide for them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Open our hearts now that we might study your word together and allow your word to fall on good soil. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All righty. <clears throat> Let's dig right into our study for tonight, 20, 25 minutes of looking at God's word from Psalm 119, verses 49 through 56 if we can cover all of those. Uh, let me just begin with verse 49. And the psalmist said, Remember the word to your servant upon which you have caused me to hope. The psalmist now in this section of Psalm 119 
basically he's going to be dealing with comfort. Comfort. And he says he's now uh, uh, talking uh, to the Lord in this portion. He said, remember the word to your servant. Uh, remember what you have said to your servant. Do you know, uh, are you, can you remember some words that God has said to us? Uh, I say this over and over. And one of the great comforts that I find in the word of God is the promise that he will never leave me nor forsake me. And I am always reminded that this is the word of God to his servants. Uh, uh, he, he gives us his word and his word provides hope. The psalmist said, up on which, we talk talking about your word, up on which you have caused me to hope. When we look at what God has said to us, it ought to provide hope. Hope is that absolute assurance of God mingled with anticipation. Hope. Hope gives us uh, uh, a look toward the future where, where we are able to trust him. Uh, we're in the period, uh, we're in the phase uh, of the Hebrew alphabet that's called uh, Zayin, Zayin, which means weapon, weapon. Remember the word, God's word uh, uh, can be uh, a weapon. He said it's sharper than any two-edged sword, even able to divide soul and spirit. So God's, God's word is our weapon. God's word is what causes us to have hope. You know, none of us, I don't believe, has ever seen God. We haven't seen him. And when we look at God, we must view him through his word. And the word of God is God. And when we look at God's word, these are uh, a word that he recorded uh, in Scripture that we might be able to live human lives looking to him with hope. And then he says, this is my comfort. Here it is. Listen to this. This is my comfort in my affliction. He said, here is the comfort I have as I go through some rough times, as I go through affliction, as I go through hurt, as I go through human uh, 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 problems. He said, here is my comfort for your word has given me life. In the midst of suffering, in the midst of affliction, in the midst of hardship, the psalmist says that I find hope in your word and comfort in my afflictions because your word has given me life, has preserved my life. As it relates to comfort, we just, uh, we just went through the other night, another night of horrific weather in the state of Arkansas and across uh, much of the United States. And we're in tornado season. And when you and I uh, approach that season, we usually uh, turn our televisions on and view uh, the weather and listen at what they're saying. But as we listen at the weather this past week, it looked like the tornado was about to come the path or close to the path that it was March 31st of 2023. And as it approached West Little Rock, 
uh, we paid close attention to where it was and it got around. They talking about Rawlin Road and all across there, Chanel, and that's where we live in that area and Highway 10 and, 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 and they was given the areas and many of you were texting me and uh, saying, Pastor, I hope that you're in your safe space and, and all and I sure appreciate y'all remembering to pray for your pastor uh, on a regular basis. That gives me comfort. But let me tell you my greatest comfort uh, doing there, and I, I'm, not, I'm not one that runs to safe spaces, and I'm not against it. I think you ought to put as many walls between you as you can. I understand all of that. But my safest place in bad weather is in the arms of the Lord. In, 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 in my recliner, praying, trusting him, and oh, how much comfort I had that night in the storm because my trust was in him. And knowing that he has promised me he would never leave me nor forsake me, I'm telling you that gave me great comfort. I prayed. I'm trusting him. I'm asking him to take care of me and take care of our home, take care of my wife and uh, provide safety for us. But I did not pull my hair out. I didn't jump and run to the bathtub and get in. And I don't have anything against anybody that takes those precautions for they are good precautions. And always listen at the weather and the siren going off. All I'm here to say is comfort is in God's word. And if we would trust him, put our faith in him, study his word, read his word, his word will give us comfort even in troubled times, in afflictions, because his word gives us life. Verse 51 says, the proud have me in great derision, yet I do not turn aside from your law. He, he's talking about the wicked folks and how the, how the wicked folks come after him, how the, how, how the wrongdoers are looking at him and talking about him and got him in great derisions, uh, uh, looking at him from uh, evil intent. But he said, as I look at the proud, as I look at the, wit, the wicked, I stay true to your word. I don't turn aside from your law. I, I, I look at what they're saying. I listen at what they're saying. And, and, and they have uh, great harm that they want to do to me. But, Lord, when I done all of that, looking at what they was doing, I did not turn from obeying your law. And then he said, now, a while ago in verse 49, he said, uh, Lord, I'm asking you to remember the words to your servant. But then he come down to verse 52. He said, I remember your judgment of old, O Lord. I remember. I, I, I remember your judgments. I remember how you judged the wicked. I remember how you took care of Pharaoh and the Egyptians and how they pursued your people and how you judged them and they was drowned in the Red Sea. I remember. I remember in the wilderness and how you judged those who were not obedient. Uh, I remember your judgments of old. I I look back and I see how you judged in the past our uh, during the period of our ancestors. We we look at it and you were able to judge them. Oh, Lord, the feeling he have in it. You see the old oh Lord. I remember your judgment of old. Oh, Lord, I remember them. 
and have comforted myself. He said that when I look at the judgments of old, when I look at how you hound the wicked, when I look at how a holy God comes against evil, uh, that gives me comfort, he said, when I think about that. Indignation has taken hold of me because of the wicked who forsake your law. He says, when I, when I look at those who forsake your law, it causes me indignation. It, it moves me uh, to feel uh, hurt and harm because of the wicked who forsake your law. When, when I look at the folks that go against your law, walk away from it, forsake it, it is not a good feeling to see people that will trample your law underfoot. Uh, I think right there ought to be encouragement for us and uh, comfort to know that God's law, what God has said, uh, is it's wise for us to obey it. Don't read the Bible and then come back and say, well, that's what the Bible said, but I think. Please, ma'am, please, sir, let's never bring in where we are disagreeing. We can say, I don't understand it. We can say, I, I need help with it. But don't never get to the point to where you forsake what thus says the Lord. He says, your statue has been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. He says that your statue, your, your word, statue, precepts, all of that we're talking about now, his word, those uh, authorities that God has passed down uh, to mankind is his statue and his laws. And he said, your statue has been my songs. As I, as I look at uh, praising and singing songs, uh, it has come from your statue in the house of my pilgrimage. As I, as I journey on earth, as I look at uh, the Lord's house, and as I look at worship center, he says that your, your word, your statue, your precepts, what you have said has been my song, has been my uh, uh, praise, has been my uh, worship as I do that. He said, now, I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and I keep your word. Going through the night, the night, the night is a difficult time for so many. The night is a difficult time for many who has been uh, divorced. The night is a difficult time for those who are lonely. The night can bring about stress and loneliness and in a time where you just don't have peace. Uh, and the psalmist said, during the night, I remember your name. I, I, I remember uh, your name during the night, oh Lord. I, uh, uh, I can call on you in the midst of the night. I don't know about you, but there has been so many nights in my life uh, before I go to bed, I mean go to sleep, I get in the bed and uh, usually I look back now at my uh, memory and I usually remember the Lord's name every night. Uh, every night, I try to spend some time in my uh, alone time with him. Every night, before I close my eyes to go to sleep and doze off, I usually say, Lord, thank you 
for another day. Just being able during the night to not forget him and knowing that as we drift off to sleep, it's comforting to remember his name. And then he said, and keep your law. Uh, as we look at the night in our lives, I want to encourage us that regardless whether it's day or night, let's keep his law. Keep and obey. Uh, uh, keep means obey. That's, uh, uh, don't forget that. When we keep his word, we are obeying his word. And the psalmist, I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and I keep your law. Here it is. Here's the closing. This has become mine. This has become mine. This is what I have decided to do. This is what I have owned in my life. He says, because I keep your precepts. He says, I obey your law and this has become the way I live. This has become the way I walk by obeying your law and, and keeping your precepts. I just want to encourage all of us tonight. Let's find ourselves keeping God's law. Let's find ourselves keeping what thus says the Lord. Let's find ourselves finding comfort and strength in God's word. And the greatest comfort we will have in God's word will come as a result of us obeying God's word. And then always remember, the wicked folks will be there. Those against God will be there. But our hope, our comfort is trusting in God's word, remembering God's judgment of old, the safest place to be in life is in the will of God. It may not work out always like we think it ought to, but I am of the persuasion that God's word will provide hope. God's word will provide comfort. God's word will provide directions. And if I will keep God's word, if I will find myself obeying God's word, then God's word will serve as a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I think that's going to come up in Psalm 105, I believe it is. Is, 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 is that's how I have come to live my life now is finding hope, faith, and trust in the word of God. And I'm going to live by God's word. I'm going to allow God's word to provide directions for my life, for this church, for our ministry. And I'm encouraging you to hide God's word in your heart that you might not sin against thee. The psalm is going to say on over in there, direct my steps by your word. All I'm saying is Psalm 119, our reason for bringing it, is trying to get greater Second Baptist to find a renewed love for the word of God. Let's keep God's word. Let's obey God's word. Let's read God's word. Let's study God's word. Let's share God's word. Let's proclaim God's word. Let's love the word of God. Father in heaven, we thank you now for this brief reflection once again in reminding us that there is comfort and hope, strength, 
found in the word of God. Help us not grow weary in well-doing, understanding that we will reap if we faint not. Be with those who are sick and shut in, those who are discouraged, those who are lonely, those who are dealing with stress, those who are dealing with marital problems. Oh, Lord, provide comfort and care. And we just thank you for taking care of us, preserving our life, even through bad weather. As we go through this period of tornado weather, Lord, we're trusting you, believing that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Give us comfort as we walk by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you this night and always is our prayer. Hope to see you Sunday morning. God bless.